Hello, Grandma DC here, and it's raining again. It's one thing Missouri doesn't need, it's more rain. I don't know, they've been afraid the dam's going to go over down at Truman. It's been really scary, and this looks even scarier. All right, we've got a really big shoe today. That was an old reference, wasn't it? <laughs> and uh, a lot to talk about. We'll try to keep it brief. <laughs> like I always do, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's get with it. Alrighty, I had six weeks on the carnivore diet. My collar straight? No, it's not. Oh, she's such a slob. Yes, she is. Six weeks. Today is Sunday. Six weeks on the carnivore diet. But then I thought, okay, well, you know, this body's unique. We know that uh, if you come along with me or if you just came welcome to my youtube family i have struggled my whole life with weight and we know i've done it all just name one i'll tell you what it did for me and uh, or didn't do for me and it seems like nothing's ever worked yes calorie counting portion control oh i found one of my portion control boxes the other day you can only have this much salad you know that was great. That was a lot of fun, packing all that salad as much as you could in this little tiny box. There's your portion. You know, the meat looked like a, uh, something you would have taken medicine out of at a hospital, you know. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> I have my Woman's Day magazine. I want to congratulate this woman who, who uh, Nora Gawking, I guess was her name. She lost 185 pounds, and I just wanted to, to uh, congr I congratulate anybody who's lost a lot of weight. I've had a lot of you message me that you've lost a lot of weight. Hang on to that weight loss as hard as you can. Sometimes it just comes back anyway. Uh, so that's what I've been searching for, a permanent solution all my life, and I am 60 years old. Oh my goodness, she said her age. Yeah, I don't mind. Um, I earned every one of those years and every one of these gray hairs, baby doll. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, if you've watched any of my old, old, old videos, I don't know if they've taken them down or what, but uh, I went through raw vegan, vegan, uh, vegetarian. Uh, while I was vegetarian or vegan, I got gout. And uh, the doctor didn't believe me when I said I can't have gout. I'm, I'm zero fat vegetarian, low fat. You know, I have been for nine months, or six to nine months I've been doing that diet. There's no way I could get gout. And he's like, mm-hmm, sure, mm-hmm. You're eating ice cream. You're eating full-fat things. You know, you're just lying to me. He wouldn't even acknowledge that I was a vegetarian. It was like, mm-mm, la-la, 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 la So uh, I quit being a vegetarian then and there. I was like, why not? And just went back to eating the sad American diet again because what can you do? You walk in our grocery stores, that's all there is. Sad American diet. Everything is sugar, sugar, carb, 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 sugar, carb, carb, carb. Try to find something with zero carbs. you got to really look. I mean, you've really got to dig. So, before I get to congratulating Nora here, I want to talk about my experience and, and my weight so far. And some of you have messaged me on Facebook. Thank you. You've looked me up, Elise Keith, K-E-I-T-H, in Lincoln, Missouri. And um, I have tried to answer some of your messages. I need you to tell me you're my YouTube family because I get a lot of uh, people from, let's just say, overseas, men, wanting to friend me. Yeah, no, not buying that. <laughs> yeah. And don't tell me that you live in the United States, but you're on an oil rig offshore. No, not buying that either. <laughs> I just, I love the stories. I, I'm sorry. I just don't believe any of it anymore. Well, you know, as I told Dwayne, he was like, oh, you don't like me because I'm a man. I'm like, no, nah, you don't count. <laughs> I didn't mean that that way, Dwayne. So, here's the deal. Every diet I have tried and nothing has really worked. Well, you just name one. I've done it. I swear. And then we came up with the timed diet. Now that was new. And I'm always up for new, you know. Um, only eat during certain hours. And I thought, well, I, I took a chiropractor when my back, lower back was hurting so bad when I was almost at 300 pounds uh, six weeks ago, uh, seven, eight weeks ago, whenever I went. And he was like, there's something wrong with your back and your hip. He didn't want to touch me. And then he said, have you thought about losing weight? 
really? No, never. <laughs> Come on, Doc. Like we all don't have mirrors or don't pass by windows that reflect, you know. I don't keep a lot of mirrors in my house. Uh, yeah, stupid question, doctor. But uh, so anyway, I went to my doctor and as we know, she uh, diagnosed me with uh, scrotovili sacroiliitis and wanted to give me a shot of cortisone in the hip. And I was like, really? I happen to know people that have to get those like every two to three months. They don't really help much and the cortisone will deteriorate their bones. And I mean, it doesn't take much research to find that. That's just a downward spiral. I'd rather die naturally and in pain. So uh, I was going to get the shot though because it was hurting me that bad. I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. I was having trouble. If you even watch my videos, you'll hear me. <sighs> and I was really, I don't think you, I didn't even tell you the struggle. I was having just getting around my kitchen. It was horrible. And I was considering the shot, and then she left for the day uh, after she told me to leave and come back, and she left for the day, and they wouldn't make me an appointment to get the shot for three weeks. Thank heavens. Thank heavens. Because that gave me three weeks to suffer and get angry and decide I was not going to do that shot. And I started researching more ways to get rid of whatever sacroiliitis was. Because I kept saying her, what's causing it? But sacroiliitis. No, that's the symptom. What's causing it? It's sacroiliitis. I mean, she was just stuck in this loop like all MDs get stuck in. Although, I think she's a PA, which is a nurse practitioner. Usually they're better. But, she isn't. I like her. She's got a great personality. But she's just, it's like all of them. She's trained in a certain way and she's just stuck. And she will not look outside the box. So, we have to look outside the box for ourselves. And I'm talking about us older middle-aged women who the minute we walk into a doctor's office are hypochondriacs, aren't we? No matter what. If you haven't been a doctor in three years, you're a hypochondriac when you come in. So we all know that. That's the way they treat us. And I started researching. Welcome to now. I found that I had done keto. I had a whole Grandma DC's Keto Insanity channel for like a couple of years. And I did keto, and I love cooking and experimenting. It's so much fun. And I, I played with y'all, and we experimented, and we had a blast. Some things didn't turn out so good. Some things did, you know. But at the same time, eating the vegetables and the cruciferous vegetables had contributed to me having this sacroiliitis and this inflammatory reaction. I didn't know that at the time. I figured it out, though. A lot of research. And I wish I could quote you studies and peer-reviewed stuff like some of the people here on YouTube do, but I'm sorry, I'm a real person. <laughs> yeah, I have a bachelor's degree, but it's in social work. That has nothing to do with dietary. <laughs> and I don't have the brain to do the dietary facts. facts. Although I read them. I just don't retain them. 60. I'm lucky to retain my own name. Give me a break. All right. So... I started the diet and I started doing carnivore, cut out all vegetables, all grains, everything anti-inflammatory, fruits, you name it, gone. And at first I felt horrible and then it got better and at six weeks I think I've hit mental clarity. I do know the answer to life, the universe and everything. <gasps> it's 42. 60 years old. You're never going to get mental clarity. Come on. But I do feel so much better, and I have to tell you, I carried a whole bag of trash down to the end of the drive, which my drive's kind of long, and I put it in the trash can, and I walked back, and I didn't feel like I was going to die. That was a joy. <laughs> I um, have ex been experiencing a tiny bit of hip pain still, but it's nothing I can't handle. And here's another weird thing. I was talking about ears ringing before I started this diet. My ears ringing really loud, so loud that I was starting to be distracted by it. Well, again, did some studying. I had been drinking uh, tonic water, which has quinine in it, for cramping in my hands and thighs. I woke up one night with a cramp so bad in the, um, both of my inner thighs, like above the knee, that I was flopping around like a fish out of water. You know, like you pulled me right out of that ice hole and threw me on the ice. I could not get comfortable. And I actually was screaming. It hurts so bad. And so I was drinking quinine water, tonic water. It does help ease cramps. However, as a side effect of ears ringing, 
Oh yeah. So I quit drinking that at the same time I started the carnivore diet. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, leave it to me to totally mess up an experiment, right? However, at this moment, I started. Um, I also started taking tinnitus 911. I personally cannot recommend that product because uh, my ears have not stopped ringing. I don't have silence, like they said. And I'm still taking it because I paid for that bottle. I'm going to take all of it. And it's just herbs and things. But um, the ringing in my ears has lessened back to its normal level for me that I can ignore. I've always just thought I hear all the electronics in the air. But it's tolerable now. Now, since I am an awful experimenter, I cannot say it was because I quit drinking the quinine because of the carnivore diet or because of the 911, which I don't really think so. So, um, yeah, fingernails growing, ears ringing less, and here's the weirdest kicker of all, floaters. You know what floaters are? It's those little dots in front of your eyes that sometimes look like horses galloping across your view. Or when you're sitting in a doctor's office and you've been there for two hours waiting to get in and you're looking at those white walls or light green or blue whatever and you see spots, gray little floaty spots and you move your eyes around and sometimes you watch them and people around you think you're insane because you're sitting there doing this, you know. And you never can quite keep up with them before they float out of you. Yeah. It's, someone told me it's like little pieces of uh, flesh or something floating around in the fluid in your eye and you can see it because you have farsightedness or something. That was an eye doctor. I have no idea what she was talking about. But I noticed the other day I was looking at a white wall. I was bored. I thought, I don't see any floaters. And I started doing the looking around inside my eyeball thing. Barely, barely could see any floaters. And that's after starting the carnivore diet. Coincidence? Maybe. Who knows? So my weight. You're going, what's going on with the weight? Alright, I had this brand new scale. And it's supposed to be, I bought it just for this purpose. And before I started the diet. And it's supposed to be very, very accurate. So I went... First time I weighed on it was 298. Now, I know that's a true weight because I had weighed at the doctor's office when I was there back when she was going to give me the shot in my hip and I was at just nearly 300. So that was pro that was accurate. All right. Then I weighed and it said 267, which would have been a 31 pound loss. Today I got on the scales and the first reading was 2 60 and I said there's just there's no way I lost another seven pounds. It just it can't be I got off of the scale I got back on it, it said 64 then I got back on so it said 67 I got back on and I got back on and it said 66 now I was taking photographs although this uh, Is blinking on so fast it, it like lights up with the weight that my camera could not focus fast enough before it went off That was so aggravating. So I did take a lot of series of pictures and I'll post them. And the last one was 266.66. 2666 is just appropriate for me, isn't it? And I thought, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, so I either plateaued this week, it stayed about the same, and I, or I think I lost a little. And, and I tell you why, because I had to uh, tighten up the string on my pants. <laughs> you know? Size. I can tell I'm losing size. I can tell it in my face. I can tell it in my chest. I always lose weight from the top down. Why? I would rather lose weight from the bottom up. I would like to see some thin feet, ankles, knees, and please, God, take away those thighs. You know? But no. The thighs, the behind they're all the last to go and they never really go they just shrink a little and stay with me so that's what's going on with the carnivore diet guys um i have to say that um i'm doing bone broth in my instapot which is just a uh jennifer brought me some 
beef bones. There was more meat on those beef bones than I've got on most of the roast I bought at Walmart. So I'm just thrilled. Anyway, it's cooking in my Instapot over here. Uh, yesterday I did opt for some dairy. I haven't done dairy a lot. But I decided that if my weight loss was slowing, it's probably because I'm not getting enough calories in. Although someone the other day I was researching and said there's no such thing as a metabolism slow down and, and stop because of not eating enough calories that you can even fast and your metabolism will go up. And I thought, I, maybe, not my experience, could be not this body. Right? We all know this is a different body. Northern European, Viking, German, cold country people. I don't know if that, they say DNA now they've discovered has a lot to do with how you can lose weight or can't. So let's congratulate Nora from Women's Day Magazine. Uh, she lost 185 pounds. Now, here's my problem with this diet. Um, it's showing that for breakfast, and this is pretty much dead on keto. And we all know keto does work. You've just got to be very careful about those veggies. Okay. Scrambled egg with coconut with veggies and a side of fresh fruit. Really? It was one strawberry if she had a side of fresh fruit. But they're showing a whole plate full, and I think that's misleading. Okay. And then for lunch, she had a natural chicken sausage. It names one I've never heard of. And then it said boiled baby potatoes and a, uh, a big salad. And again, for people who are extremely insulin resistant like myself, potatoes and salad, no, that's just sugar. Chicken and veggies sauteed in olive oil with herbs and lemon served with steamed cauliflower rice and an optional side fruit. And again, I'm, I'm a little, I was a little skeptical. They're showing um, big portion sizes. I mean, you can see how, how big that portion size looks. That's misleading, guys. That's really misleading. But now, if you want to read the fine print, okay, the skinny on the Whole30, and here's how, it, this is an older mag, by the way. I got this a long time ago to read in the toilet, <clears throat> or as I call it, the library. And um, I just never got around to reading it in the library until last night. I was bored. It was raining. What can I say? Okay. <laughs> then it's, it goes on. It says, after attending a seminar on anti-inflammatory foods, uh, there's a, a nutritionist. She's uh, Miss Urban. It's a strange last name, isn't it? Created a 30-day eating plan and recruited her blog followers to help test it. And just like that, the whole 30 phenomenon was born. The gist is to stick to the anti-inflammatory foods. Eggs, fish, meat, produce, nuts, seeds, and natural fat. Now, except for the produce part, that all sounds a lot like the carnivore diet to me. All right. Now, she says once you've, uh, you've gone pretty strict, which like keeping it kind of carnivore is what it sounds like, then you can start adding back in those more inflammatory foods, such as veggies and fruit, slowly, and then see how your body reacts to them. That makes sense. As a matter of fact, um, it says it's a very common way of eating to trigger weight loss, improve health, and issues like fibromyalgia, diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune conditions, uh, you know, arthritis and stuff like I have. Um, I also have sarcoidosis, which is an autoimmune condition. I've been in remission for 20 years. Plus, actually, about 25 years. And um, it goes on, and it, it basically... It also has helped with uh, anxiety, brain fog, and it helps MS sufferers. And bless Nora's heart, she was an MS sufferer, and she managed to control her MS. I really doubt that those pictures they show of all that food, and they talk about the fruit and the veggies and stuff, I think they're just wanting to make it look like the mainstream, what we've always been told, eat a balanced, balanced fruits, veggies, grains, balanced, balanced, and then you read the actual thing and it's like, no, eliminate all of that, just stick with your animal products for the most part, and then add some of those back in to see if you gain weight or if you have your uh, pain return. I'll add things back cautiously. So I bought large curd cottage cheese. I love cottage cheese. It's very palatable. 
Whereas some of the other stuff is not so palatable. You just eat it, like fish. Well, but I ate it. It all, the dogs sure enjoyed it. Actually, the cats. The cats I'm going to have fixed really enjoyed the, the fish, what I couldn't eat, fish and eggs. But, um, okay, you know, I added some dairy. And now this morning I'm waiting to see if my hip starts hurting worse, my back starts hurting worse. I'm kind of, uh, we'll see what the weight does. I'm, I bought another one, so I'm going to add a little more dairy, a little more cheese, and um, slowly. And we'll see if the weight loss continues, if it stops. Uh, am I not eating enough calories? Because when you're on the carnivore diet, you know, a few bites of meat and you're like, okay, I'm done. And you're not even hungry. You don't even think about food. It's crazy. It, it takes a while to get there, though. You got to go through the flu and I feel bad and the withdrawals. Oh, my. And withdrawals from sugar are worse than withdrawals from cigarettes. Take my word for that one. I quit smoking years ago. And it didn't bother me half as bad as the withdrawals from sugar. This one so far has given me the best results as far as pain relief, weight loss, and mental feeling better. I will not call it clarity. I refuse. Alright guys, what is the date today? Alexa, what's the date today? See if she knows what the date today is. I like my Alexa thing. Everybody says, you know she's today listening. Today is Sunday, June 23rd. Sunday, June 23rd, 2019. Um, she, um, they say, oh, she's always listening to you. And I said, really, no one else is. That's, that's great. <laughs> hey, guys, you want to see the cats? Um, I know I've had a lot of you donating to my PayPal on my homepage. Thank you so much. Well, not a lot, but, you know, a few of y'all. And it's really helping. I cannot wait. By the time July 2nd gets here, we're going to be able to get these all spayed. And I'm hoping to have enough that we can neuter the babies. I'll have to hang on to them longer. Um, I'm going to ask how young you can neuter a male kitten because i got no clue. I know they have to be older. But I would like to have them neutered just merely for the fact that that might save someone else who has a female cat. Let's just not propagate these. I don't mind them running around my house, my barns, my outside, you know, eating mice. This is great. Um, I like cats for that reason. And if they're a loving, I have had a loving cat once in my life. Oh, he was great. He, he, he lives on in memory and effigy and since it was that great. You get one a lifetime, I suppose. So let's go look and see what we've got. Angus, you want to go look at the kitties? Uh, not really. Is it raining outside? You can't go outside to potty? Nope. Can't go out. You want some food? Are you hungry? What? Huh? Oh, yeah, you heard food. My goodness. This guy speaks English, I swear. He really does. <laughs> Skinner! You won't go outside to potty either, will you? Oh, no. We don't want to get our clothes wet. Okay. Let's go look at the cats. What do you say? Angus. Does his ear smell funny? Angus. You want a treat? <gasps> a treat? Yeah, he speaks English enough. <laughs> Dog bone. You. Do a trick for me. Circles. Circles. What do you mean? I need to sit. Bow bow. Oh, good boy. <laughs> yeah, here you go, Betsy. Oh, oh, hang on. There you go. Oh, dropped it. Well, that's old age for you. I think we're going to name him Hector. He finally ended up with the name Hector. Hi, Hector. He's a good boy. <laughs> I love him. He's cute. Here she is. I haven't got a name. I just call her Little Cat. This one I call Grandma Cat. Grandma Cat is noisy. Yes, you're noisy, Grandma Cat. She's pretty, she's pretty tame. She doesn't really... Yeah, okay. Well, there you go. That's a cat. Always show you their best side, don't they? And this I call Mama Cat with her babies. Now, I don't think the two black ones were hers. I think they belong to that super feral cat that we had to take uh, elsewhere to the, 
to the other lady's house that had the barn. But um, she has adopted her babies. And she's feeding them. She's a good mama. So I call her mama. Are you guys hungry? Is everybody getting hungry? So you're all getting used to me feeding them. So where are the other babies? Oh, here we go. Yeah, we're a little sicky. Some of us have eye googers. I've been treating that. So, yeah, that little black one likes me. And the one of them, end of his tail was kind of torn off. I call him Stumpy. He's also cute, though. So, everybody okay? Everybody sleeping? Or where's our newest little guy? There. Are you sleeping back in the corner? He's moving around, so he's okay. Little orangey one was the last one I caught. Ears moving. You're okay. Alright. Zoo. <laughs> that the neuter and spay clinics kind of realize when you come in and you say, I've got feral cats, I'm trying to rescue the neighborhood. They would say, oh, let's get them in as soon as possible. We know how hard it is to hang on to feral cats. Well, we can't work in for three weeks. It's like nearly a month. It's like, oh, that's okay. I'll cage them up. <laughs> nice. That's all the news that is news. That's all the updates. Uh, the chicken. Oh, like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye. I got to do laundry in my own house. <laughs> I forgot to tell you guys that I saved myself 20 bucks right here. Going to the laundromat was horrible. I forgot to tell you guys. My repair girl came back and she brought her husband. She left me. She left me with him. <laughs> I about cried. I thought, oh no, no, no. And she's like, oh, he's very competent. And he changed the pump, which was out. That's what was really wrong with my washing machine. You know, that guy said there was nothing wrong with it. It had a pump out. She fixed the pump. That fixed the door problem. That fixed the uh, SO4, 5, whatever all those other things and then he hooked up the water to my dishwasher it's not leaking but the other guy had screwed up the drain pipe so bad that he's gonna have to completely redo that and he showed me exactly that it wasn't down far enough for the pump drain for the dishwasher I believe him and so while he was here my breaker box, <laughs> the one that everybody goes, that looks dangerous. Yeah, uh-huh, you think? It started crackling and hissing because we had the breaker on where it hadn't been on in the laundry room for six years. And he went over and turned it off and he goes, he fixed it. He made it more solid. But then he said, mm, turn it off if it starts making noise. I'll buy you new breakers. I'm going to put new, uh, two new breakers in your box. And I was like, oh, thank you. Or 275 it was for that uh, pump change and I don't know what they're going to charge to do the breaker box, finish the drain, and fix a couple of leaks that the first plumber who came, we all remember him, right? <laughs> Three days of grumping and griping. Um, he left me with a lot of leaks. So they're going to fix those small leaks also. I think I finally found the right people to do the job. <laughs> It's costing a fortune, but oh well, I'll just manage. <laughs> I love y'all. Bye-bye.